Hi Spur students, welcome back to the spring 2012 semester. Um, hopefully you had a nice winter break. Hopefully everybody found the fall semester of Spurs productive. Uh, my name is Eric Dieter. I'm the program and curriculum coordinator. By now you should know my name and face and voice and you should know that if you ever have questions you can always get my contact information from your teacher and, and contact me. With me as always is Ashley and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi again, I'm Ashley Miller, an AI here at UT Austin. I teach Rhetoric 309K, um, the Rhetoric of Consumer Culture, and I work with the Crockett students. Good to see you all. I um, wanted to tell you a little bit about my own research interests in case you're ever wondering what we do here at UT when we're not talking to you on video camera. Um, I do um, English research in the more literary field and I'm interested in late 19th and early 20th century authors um, like Edith Wharton or Theodore Dreiser, F. Scott Fitzgerald, um, particularly in material culture, so how objects and things play a role in those novels um, Great. between realism and modernism. Yeah. Great. So this is the first video of the spring semester, and really, uh, just like in the fall, this is an introductory video. We want to overlay um, what you're going to do this semester talk about what you can expect, talk about our expectations of you, and maybe talk a little bit about the bridge skills, the things you did in the fall that are gonna still be applicable here in the spring. Um, so the topic for the spring is not going to be the DREAM Act, which may please some or, or, or all of you. 15 weeks is a long time to, to focus on, on a subject, but hopefully you saw how that sort of extended focus leads to uh, richer understanding, richer conversations, which is sort of the point of that fall semester. In the spring, we're going to look at a different topic, but we're going to try to use the same richness, robustness, same depth. Um, our topic this semester will be the 2012 presidential election, so you all should know that we're going to have a nationwide presidential election in November of 2012. So by the time you get back in school in January, the primary season will have begun. Um, so what we're going to do is pretend that you all are working on the staffs of these potential presidential candidates. And throughout the semester, you'll work in a group with other staffers to look at a president's rhetoric or a potential presidential candidate's rhetoric. How are they talking? Who are they talking to? What are they talking about? Why? Uh, so you can see how all the issues of appeals and audience and um, rhetorical strategies come into play. Um, we're going to branch out and talk in, into visual rhetoric, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But mostly what you're going to do is become really conversant, really good and knowledgeable about a particular candidate, what they believe, how they use rhetoric. Um, you'll be randomly assigned to a candidate most of the candidates are going to be Republicans. Of course, we'll have one group, maybe two groups, working on Obama, uh, the current president. But all these candidates are approaching this election in different ways. They're approaching the issues, the political issues, the social issues, the economic issues, in different ways. And so it'll be your responsibility within your group as a sort of pretend campaign staff member on that group to really dig in and figure out what those rhetorical strategies are what those issues are that are important to the candidate and how they express that to audiences. And audiences here means voters a lot of times. Um, so you'll do more analysis essays. There'll be a couple of analysis essays that you're right, but then you'll end the semester with a group project where you're actually creating a bit of, of rhetoric, uh, an argumentative text that is meant to be persuasive and also informative. And that's gonna take the form of a mock sort of campaign speech that your candidate might give. So again, you'll be a campaign staffer randomly assigned to a candidate and you'll spend about 10 weeks getting to know everything you can know about that candidate. Um, that candidate may drop out and we'll talk about what, what might happen with your group if that happens, but for now, this will be your person. You don't have to agree with this person in order to do the work, right? If you learned one thing from the fall, it's that the goal here is to reduce misunderstanding and produce understanding. We kept saying that, right, in all, the, all of the lesson plans. So the job here is to really listen, right, to really understand, and then you'll engage with each other. So you'll have debates where your candidate will be talking to somebody else's candidate. So again, you can do all this work. You can do all this analytic work without really having to agree or disagree with them, right? If you do, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine, right? That's not the goal. Okay, so I want to make that clear. I'm going to have Ashley talk a little bit about how some of the fall skills will translate to doing this work 
and then we'll come back and talk about some of the new work um, that you'll be doing this semester as well. Great. So you guys learned so much last fall. Um, you did rhetorical analysis essays where you learned to be expert analysts of an audience and a writer, and you looked at the ways that a writer would use rhetorical tools such as ethos, logos, or pathos to reach out to that audience and to appeal to the values and the beliefs and the ideologies that audience holds in order to be persuasive. Those are all skills that you're going to be using in this current semester. Um, we're going to be attending really closely to the ways that politicians appeal to audiences of voters. We're going to be needing to understand what kinds of ideologies fuel these voters, um, right-wing versus left-wing, liberals and conservatives, what values matter to each of these different groups. Um, those are going to be tools that you bring with you from the fall into the spring. You're going to need to think about you know, ethos, logos, and pathos again. So if you want to review your notes from last semester, if you need a refresher, that would be a really smart way to get ready. Also, at the end of the fall, you started to learn a little bit about visual rhetoric and how the way images can make arguments in the same way that words can make arguments. Um, a lot of what you do in the first unit, especially as you analyze a website, you're going to be looking at both words and images together. Um, sometimes moving images, such as video clips, sometimes a 2D image like a campaign button or slogan. Um, and you're going to need to take all of those visual kind of information that you learned towards the end of last semester. And we're going to give you even more information about that. Um, some of the other newer things that you'll learn, um, one of the most important for us is research. We didn't do much research in the fall, but here at UT in the 306 class, that's an integral part of the class and our students do tons of research. So that is something you have to look forward to in the spring. You'll be doing research um, about you know, how different news sources represent your candidate's position, what types of news stories are out there, what types of opinion stories are out there. Um, so you'll be doing lots of research, you'll be learning even more about visual rhetoric, um, and a little later in the semester we're going to give you some heightened rhetorical skills. Um, we're going to talk about things like kairos and stasis, uh, which you'll learn very soon <laughs> what those mean, and they'll just help you make these rhetorical arguments even more, um, you know, adeptly and thoroughly than, than you've already started. Yeah, so hopefully you'll, you'll find all of that relatively exciting and interesting. Um, hopefully you'll become better informed citizens, which is always a goal of, of these rhetoric and writing classes, is to sort of develop civic literacy. And we're going to do that in a very transparent way by looking at um, the elections, which are important events in American culture. Um, I, th I think it's important to, to stress again what Ashley said, that the research is going to be really important, but we're going to make sure that um, the research we ask you to do is stuff that you're going to be able to get a hold of. Most of this is going to conduct itself online, so you and your teachers and your uh, instructor partners can negotiate when and how that takes place in school, out of school, um, with help on your own. But there's going to be plenty of, of, of practice, lots of lessons on how to do robust research. Uh, the other big thing that Ashley mentioned that, that I think is important to, to, to note right now is that we're going to talk a lot about bias. This is probably the word you hear most often. Um, what we're talking about there is how do we differentiate what counts as a news item from an opinion item, especially online when these lines can get uh, blurry. They can bleed into one another. So there's going to be a whole unit on differentiating news from opinion, which is really just a lesson on evaluating the, 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 the information. So the researchers is pulling information in, and then there's a whole other step before you use that information. And we're going to call that the evaluative step. And a lot of that evaluation is figuring out, again, using the skills you've already learned, who are this, who's the intended audience of these things, why does this thing exist, right? What's its purpose of the rhetorical situation? And, and all of that is to sort of figure out the bias. Where in the political spectrum? Where in the social spectrum? Uh, what communities and ideologies does this argument reside? So hopefully that, that makes sense and there's going to be a lot of practice on that. What other skills do you think are important from the fall for moving forward here in the spring? And, and, and again, think about college. Well, you just mentioned communities and ideologies. I think those are important rhetorical analysis skills. Um, you know, those are all specific um, skills that we taught you about rhetoric that you want to use. There are some other, I think, life skills, student skills that, that we started to stress in the fall that we want to make sure that you're also really conscious of. Things like, um, I know when you came to UT you all got agendas, so we have ways of keeping track of deadlines, meeting deadlines. Um, again, we want to stress this is a college level course here, and when we have due dates on the syllabus, it's important that 
you're aware of those that you're you know constantly flipping ahead a couple weeks in your syllabus or in your planner to see what's upcoming what you might want to get ready for Absolutely. if you've got a big birthday party one weekend maybe you want to start that assignment <laughs> the weekend before um, things like that to make sure that you are a conscious student and that all of the wonderful ideas and thoughts you have inside you get communicated to us in you know the best manner they can Absolutely. If, if you find that a deadline is going to be difficult to meet, you have to learn to be proactive. So it's not necessarily that uh, terrible, terrible things are going to happen to you if you can't meet those deadlines, but clearly you want to meet those deadlines as much as possible. If you can't, talk to your teacher, talk to your instructor, right. get a hold of Before me. Before you miss the deadline. Before ideally. it becomes an issue. I think that's the skill to take away. Right. We know everybody has day planners now since everybody who visited in the fall got a day planner. I, if you're not already using those, I would, I would practice. So sometime in the first week here, take the syllabus and just write down all those due dates in that day planner and uh, in nice, big, bold colors so that you see them coming, okay? Um, anything else that we want to point out to them? I think um, the only other thing I would mention is um, you all had a group work assignment in the fall, and um, I know some people got really excited to work with their peers, and in some points there were some tensions, um, which always happens when we work together. We do have some group work planned for the spring, um, and uh, we wanted to make sure that you know that at UT, this is something that happens for college students as well, and in life, certainly, in a job environment, there are lots of group projects. So when you do get to those group assignments, I think it's important to come together and work as a team, to not be shy about telling your group members if you think something's going wrong, um, make sure that you fulfill your duties to the group. Right. and. In the same way that Eric just mentioned being proactive with your teacher or your AI instructor, also be proactive with your group. If there's a deadline and you're feeling confused about what you're asked to do or you're afraid you won't be able to meet that deadline, turn to your group for help rather than sort of receding and not taking an active role there because the grades really are group grades and it's up to you all to work together and make sure that what you turn in is something that each one of you is proud of. So Absolutely. And, and you should always ask for help, right? There's a lot of people, the teacher, the instructor, me, that are there to help you. But when you get in these groups, a lot of the troubleshooting has to be done on your end because that's that's how it'll be, um, again, as, as Ashley says, in, in the classroom. And, and these group projects are very, very common. Some of you may have witnessed some of these when you visited campus. Um, so you can see a lot of this, a lot of the, this, the sort of study skills, apart from the rhetorical skills, a lot of the study skills are about timing, learning how to time, uh, managing time. There are a lot of resources on campus for managing time. There's a lot of good web information for managing time. Your guidance counselor or your teachers may have suggestions as well. But if you feel time is an issue, if you feel rushed, I would start trying to figure out what makes you feel rushed or what helps you not feel rushed and, and start practicing those things while you still have some time. Writing essays, for instance, studies indicate that um, students probably spend between two to three hours per page per draft, per essay. So you can see that uh, even a short essay of three pages may require nine hours per draft. So that's a lot of work, right? Some, sometimes they come together sooner, sometimes they, get, they come together less soon. That includes the whole process from research to, to writing to revision, but you can see that's a time commitment, and so you have to sort of be prepared for that time commitment if you want to get the most out of the the, 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 the essay, excuse me, the assignment, and, and also the class. Um, I'd like to emphasize sure. too what you just said about revision. Um, again, here at UT, the Rhetoric 306 class that you're taking, um, revision is a key part of this class. Um, every assignment that the students write, they have to revise. Um, they're required to revise it in the same way that you're revising. So when we ask for a first draft that goes to your teacher and then a second draft from that that comes to us following the initial draft you've peer reviewed those are three separate opportunities to strengthen your writing to solidify your voice to you know make your your work the best thing it can be so um, it's really important to take advantage of those revisions and when we say revision what we aren't talking about is you know a couple of word changes here and there or a new sentence in this paragraph, maybe a new sentence in that. We were talking about really structural things. Maybe you decide that your organization wasn't where it could be, and you change the order of everything, and you create a couple brand new paragraphs. Maybe you cut a couple paragraphs that you realize don't actually support your thesis. 
if you realize your thesis wasn't quite as strong as you'd like it to be and you write a new one and accordingly you write a couple new pages of material. Um, revision is a really significant change in writing. So when Eric talks about how many hours per page it, it should ostensibly take you to be doing these assignments, um, please keep in mind that when we say revision from a 2.1 to a 2.2 to a 2.3, those should be new papers. Um, and I think if you take it in that degree of seriousness, you'll find that your work really improves because you're getting such valuable feedback from your peers, from your teacher, uh, that by the time you submit it to the AIs here at UT, yeah. really, um, if you take advantage of that process, your work should be really spectacular. I, th I think it's worth emphasizing again and again that, that the revision um, is an extensive process, it's a protracted process, and if taken seriously and given a good faith effort will net stronger writing, even, despite itself. Even if you don't do anything else to improve, if you take the revision process seriously, you'll improve your writing. Um, the extent of your revision is going to depend on the feedback you get from your teacher, from your instructor, from your peers, right? From, from yourself as you reread read your essays. Um, so you have to learn to listen to what people say. So again, the rhetorical skills, the, the, the production of understanding, the reduction of misunderstanding is, is, is put into play here too. It's put into practice when it comes to the revision. So that means if you have questions about the feedback somebody gives you, you got to ask. It's another proactive skill you can develop. Just ask. People want to be helpful, of course. Um, so hopefully you'll like the semester. Hopefully you'll find that it builds on the skills in the fall so you'll have some comfort already, some familiarity, certainly some exposure, and we'll just keep building on that. Thank you so much. And again, if you have questions, please contact us. Have a great semester. Take care.